right, folks. Miss Holly and I are out at Sand Creek today, out at Almond Park. Uh, Almond Park is just down the road from West Michigan Academy. So um, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of an insect biodiversity test on the river, just to kind of check the health of it. And we're also gonna take you on a tour of some of the great walking trails. So if you do come out, remember your bug spray, remember a reusable water bottle, and have fun. Hey, Mr. Sean. I already found a frog. Now that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for animals that don't have a backbone. So this guy right here does have, oh, there he goes, does have a backbone. So we're not looking for them today. We're looking for aquatic insects and aquatic macroinvertebrates. What'd you find, Miss Holly? I found some wild ginger. Look at that. Sometimes people say it's a heart-shaped leaf or it's often referred to as a kidney-shaped leaf. And it's got a really interesting flower. It's not like your normal flowers, but there's seeds way down in there. And it's called wild ginger because the roots smell just like a ginger plant. Um, it is edible. However, you should not use it unless you're with a parent or an adult or someone else who knows about wild plants. Pretty cool. Cool. One of the macroinvertebrates we're looking for today would be a dragonfly. Now dragonflies spend most of their life in the water, but when they hatch, they hatch in big numbers so you can see them oh look at this these are damselflies you can tell a damselfly because the damselfly actually whoa it landed on my hand can we take your phone oh my gosh damselflies wings fold all the way back as compared to a uh, dragonfly whose wings stay out the entire way like an kind of like an airplane so you can see him right there very cool wow, they're all over so here so we're trying to find a spot that we can actually sample the river um, this looks like a great spot all this down all these down trees all their branches are in the middle of the river here so it provides a great habitat for many different kinds of animals including fish insects um, so it just makes it harder for, if you're a prey, if you're prey, it would be harder for a predator to find you in this mixture of uh, debris here. So I'm going to try to take a sample here without falling in. Good luck, Mr. Sean. Thanks. All right. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my feet to kick around the bottom. There's sticks and other stuff down here and rocks and gravel. So I've got my net here. Oh, remember <laughs> the damselflies we were just talking about flying around? Found one. And they're pretty well camouflaged. They look like sticks almost. Right here. Oh, yeah. So, you can see the gills locating on the back side of them because they live in the water. But he will eventually crawl up onto a log and he has an exoskeleton and it'll actually pop out of its exoskeleton as an adult. Pretty cool. All right. He's looking for any type of vegetation that's overhanging. A lot of these animals kind of get stuck when they lose grip in the river upstream and they'll float down and, and grab a hold of something like this, especially when the water's as high as it is. So I'll just get in here, kind of shake these branches around a little bit. And then I'll do another kick down here. Again, I can feel all sorts of sticks and leaves and all sorts of stuff down here. And I'm just trying to break anything that might be living in loose. All right. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> Sometimes you have to wait a second because these organisms require oxygen 
And so as soon as they get out of the water, they kind of start to go into panic mode and that's when they move and that's when you can find them a little bit easier because they're very well camouflaged. What'd you find us, Sean? Found a tooth. Oh no, that's not a tooth. You know what that Aww. is? That's a crayfish claw. It, still looks <laughs> it looked like a tooth. Oh, and I also got, yeah, let's see here. This is called a scud. It's very closely related to the shrimp. This guy has more than six legs, so it's not an insect. Another damselfly. You can see how these guys just blend in. See him right here? Why is he doing that with his tail? Flipping his tail around. Because that's where his gills are located. So he has these Ooh. three gills located on the back side there. And they're actually really big gills because they live in slower moving water traditionally. And so a larger gill allows them to absorb more oxygen because slower moving water has less oxygen in it. Cool. I'm out there with that screen, Mr. Sean. So not everybody has access to those nets like we have at school. So I had this old screen from a window at my house and my dog went through, so it no longer works. So this is a great, we call it a kick screen. So what you would do, normally you'd have another person working with you, but what I'm doing right now is I'm just setting it up against a log here. And what I will do is I will go up above all this. Ooh, look how deep it's getting. It is deep. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm kicking the ground here in front of me, and ideally everything that's underneath should get caught behind the screen. Oh, I see a spider crawling up it right now. Looks like that spider got washed down the, <sighs> down the river. So again, I'm just kind of dancing around down here on the bottom, moving all the sticks and branches. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get over on this side. And I'm going to pick this nut up and we're going to see if we have anything stuck wow, in there. Wow, look at all that stuff in there already. So again, like I said, sometimes you have to wait a little bit for the organisms to... Uh, oh, so... Here's our damselfly again, another one. There's obviously a large population of damselflies here in this river. What river is this? This is Sand Creek again, right down the road from our school. And this Sand Creek flows right into the Grand River, and then the Grand River goes right into Lake Michigan. What do we have here? Snail. Oh, that's a seed, I think. Oh, is that a snail? So let's just see here. Here's another one. Oh, no, that's not. You know, this is this is called a Helgramite. And they look like they've got lots of legs, but they really only have six legs. Some of the stuff in the back, that's just for them to kind of get a uh, get an idea of where they are. It kind of helps them navigate the water. But he does have some pretty big mandibles there that can actually bite. Ooh, he just tried to get you. He just tried getting me. <laughs> so I'm going to set him down there before he does. I will say this, I've never been bit by any of these animals that we've collected out here, so. You really want to say that right now? <laughs> I, I do. I don't want kids to be scared to be out here. Oh, oh I thought that was a caddisfly case. Oh, here's something different. Looks like some type of, I think this is a terrestrial insect that has been washed down because of all the high water. It is not an aquatic insect. Okay. Look what I found here, Mr. Sean. This is uh, Equisetum, which some people refer to as Legos of the forest or puzzle plants. Can pull them apart and put them back together. These plants were around, sometimes, <laughs> were around, the type of this plant was around a hundred million years ago and uh, used to be as tall as our trees that we have today. So we have a couple different sizes here. Oh, these are the ones that go back together really well. Yeah. Put it right back in its place. Sometimes people call them horsetail because 
they, when they grow um, to their final stage, they grow all of their seeds coming off all around and so it looks like horse tails. It's a pretty cool plant. If you can find one, check it out. Look what you're standing next to, Miss Holly, right in front of you. Poison ivy. <laughs> Poison yeah. ivy. You know, Lisa three, let them be, but sometimes you can't avoid it. Yeah. <laughs>
uh, whether it's mosquitoes to lay their eggs, uh, frogs, some of the macroinvertebrates that we're searching for. So it's a nice little safe place for these animals to, to hatch in and actually develop in. Okay, I found a dead ash tree here and you can actually see how the beetle larva weaved its way underneath the bark. And then you should see some holes here and usually they're like a D-shaped hole here. That's where they burrow in. It's a great place to hike out here at Almond Park. Just make sure you do stay on the trails uh, because earlier I showed you there is poison ivy. And there's also this noxious plant called cow parsnip. Uh, it can cause a pretty serious rash on your skin. So just stay on the trails or know what you're looking for if you do go off the trail. Make sure you go with the parent, okay? What you got there, Miss Holly? Oh, we, I discovered this really cool plant that I've seen before. I didn't know what it was called, but it's called a snowdrop bush. And look at their cool flowers. They bloom in the spring and they're bright white colored. Um, maybe can be a little bit of pink, but this is what their seed pods look like. And listen, oh, that didn't work. Some of you can pop. Oh, and then in the fall, they dry out and the seeds, you can take this little seed pod and shake it like a musical instrument. But look at that cool looking seed. It's like a perfectly round little seed. If you go on this hike here at Almond Park, see if you can find one. If so, send us a picture of you with the snowdrop tree. They're like pop rock, pop things. 